think what I want to do today is get into some portrait drawing, maybe a little portrait painting, some work digitally. Um, as always, this is no different from the way that I would approach doing this physically with pencil and paper or anything. Um, let's flip over to Photoshop and check it out. And I started these in, um, in like a quick demo of just kind of how to sketch out some portrait stuff, some different options of, of like how you could begin. And uh, you know, that's cool. Like beginning, I think sometimes is the hardest part. But yeah, now it's about a little bit about like um, exercising editorial control because um, you know, with a limited amount of time that comes with just, I don't know, like living <laughs> or whatever, you have to pick something. So like, I think this, this one up here, up at the top left, potentially uh, could be worth it. And I like, I think this one, the other two, like there's potential there. I mean, I could probably work with it and fight, but I think these two have the most potential. They just seem more interesting lighting wise. Flat front lighting over here just doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. Like I could work and make up a different light source and maybe it could be interesting and I could get some interesting shapes. But part of the reason that you study from reference is to get shapes that you wouldn't drift towards naturally, you know? Like there's some interesting shapes here, like in the rim lighting section, like right there, you know, like that's kind of an interesting shape and in the way it could maybe splinter off and create little, little Y shaped sections. Like, okay, maybe, but then there's no real strong shadow and I'm just not excited about the potential there. So what I'll probably wind up doing is just, uh, um, grabbing a new, a new thing and pulling these sketches over to another uh, another blank file. So what I like to do is just flatten the image and then just snag the parts that I want. I mean, there's like more sophisticated ways of doing this stuff, but you know, why bother too, too much with it? Because we're just going to paint over all of it anyway, you know? And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull these individually out and like probably upsample them. Um, so that we're working with uh, a high resolution file. So let's actually paint now. That's kind of a, like a, you know, practicalities, right? Like I want to paint on top of this, this thing and I want to get into the smaller forms. Um, and we have some decisions to make, you know, we could continue the comic book thing of having just like one flat value. We could also run in and introduce like a, um, like a middle value here and we could also like run up and introduce like highlight um, and we could we could still get this comic book kind of like flat graphic feel and do some hatch work and things um, and do it with these three tones and that might be a, an interesting way to go but I think this still needs some work looking back on it about like just getting some of the structures right because it's kind of it was real loose, right? And I think the looseness was productive in that it gave some energy to it, you know? Um, there's this, there's looseness that's productive and there's looseness that's, that's like detrimental. At the end of the day, the reference is gonna go away and we're gonna be left with the piece, right? That to me is, is important to remember. Yeah, and I think what we're gonna do is just start getting this light hacked in there, right? In the in the super bright highlights. So I see one in the hair here that's kind of going well up into the hat. Right? There's some stuff going on with the hand and the finger. And there's definitely some in the uh, in the face itself, right? And like what I what I'm doing now is I'm getting into the smaller forms, right? But I'm also using too big of a brush to do really to do a really good job at it. <laughs> Which is just, I don't know, it seems really dumb, right? To just like, you know, give yourself a tool that you have trouble using. Um, but in, in a way, it, it helps you not get too fixated on things that don't really matter. Like, details matter in the end, but for a while, they kind of don't, right? I 
because I, I don't want to get too fixated on small stuff and forget that like when you look at this thing from across the room it should be interesting maybe I can get pick up some highlight on the nose here there's like a teeny highlight on the glasses somewhere in there um, I should probably make the whole hat black here or use a darker value for it because it's dark right I can come in and use um, uh, some two-tone stuff I should change the shape too it's not a good representative shape right now that's probably too wide This is the disadvantage of of uh, drawing over this with the uh, you know with just pasting on the background layer. Um, okay, more highlights. Got some right here. Got a little here. Um, we can get one, sneak one into the jacket here and here. Um, there's definitely some stuff going on along the, real thin along the rim, along the like edge of the jacket here. Then we can sneak one in here and then here in the fabric. And then there's a bunch going on down here, right? Got a, sort of a strong shape there. Yeah, there we go. Then we zoom out and check, right? Is that giving us like some what we want out of this lighting situation? Um, probably. It's all right. You know, we're we're doing this super loose, right? And it's gonna take some work to at the end to kind of like bring this back together and and make it work. Um, you know, we might need to go into the rim of the hat here and we can probably start doing some stuff in the in the half light to make this begin to work right bring some half tone um, and then we have to decide like where this half tone is going to go right because it's even darker than the paper um, and it's not even really a half tone it's more of a tone right like we might just use, we might need to use like, we can also do some analysis, like some eyedropper stuff. Like if we eyedrop around on the um, light side of the jacket, right? Even in the highlights, it's around middle value. So we could use this middle value like on the light parts of the jacket. And that could help us sort of determine like how all this stuff can go. Right? Where there is some stuff getting light. This can help us describe what the jacket is kind of doing. Without like just relying on these the stark contrast of highlight to shadow. And the goal here is to be like descriptive of what's happening, right? But not overly so, and we're not gonna get like too caught up in too many details.
because there's some cool stuff going on with like the sh the overall shapes here, and we want to capture that, you know. But ultimately, we want to capture the attitude of the pose, right? And exaggerate the attitude of the pose. And I think that's like that's where the interesting stuff is going to happen. You know, like we need to get in there and carve out around the glasses so that the glasses can be brought in as a compositional thing, right? Because if we leave the glasses all in shadow, like the glasses kind of make it, right? Can't not have that there, you know what I mean? So here, I'm just basically taking the face shape and like lifting it up out of shadow, right? Like <laughs> rise from darkness. Boom. And uh, same with the hair, right? Like, probably gonna have to like run into the hair and start bringing that up. Um, just as a big shape here. Lose some of the work that I did earlier, but that's okay, right? Then I may have to like just make the decision that these glasses are gonna be like dark for now. Make sure I get sort of the same shape there. The other option too is to use a mixer brush, and you know, if you're comfortable dealing with dealing with chaos, like mixer brushes, and it's kind of the way to go. Um, because they they can run away with your image, which is actually kind of like useful sometimes. Because you know, a lot of a lot of what we've been talking about is just like how to how to begin and uh, yeah I mean this is this is kind of fun right I mean it's getting an interesting result interesting silhouette um, it's kind of chunky you know um, could probably get the get the cigarette in there you know just indicate that there's a cigarette getting smoked right here Might need to change the angle, right? Make the cigarette go out this way. Maybe like move it down even. I'm not sure. Because the problem with this reference is that the cigarette's basically pointing towards us. It's like if we we're trying to draw somebody with a sword and the tip is like right in our face, like it just would be a flat line. So that doesn't really work, you know. Um, probably make this hat a little smaller maybe. Like make it a little shorter. Just trying to figure out ways to like draw out the attitude of this a little better. Um, that works for me a little more. I don't know about, I don't know about you, but that smaller hat's better, in my opinion. Um, get our swatch again, work on the hair some over here, right? And uh, what's interesting about this is like tacking on from, from basically one value to now three values is that um, we're expanding our value range and so we can we can um, figure out what the minimum is to differentiate something, right? So now we've used like one tone kind of over most of this hair, um, and then we pumped out some highlights through that, right? But that's kind of describing most of the hair, but it's not doing a wonderful job of it, right? So we can sneak up on the minimum amount of values we need, because here we've used this on the hair and there, and we may need to just say, well, the hair needs to go like from this value halfway up. This is actually remarkably simil similar to the paper tone, right? So the hair may have to get lifted here, right? And so we introduce a fourth tone because down here we're losing the differentiation um, between the hair and the jacket itself, right? 
where the hair is, is in light and the jacket was in light got the same value and you know when you have two things that are the same value they look like they're part of the same thing and so we just lift that value and patch it out and it changes everything right and so we said that well that's the value on the hair over there so now we bring it over here right and we can three tone the hair itself and bring this tone this highlight tone down Essentially what we're working on is like a chunky textured edge graphic painting style. And graphic painting styles are kind of fun because they force decisions to happen. Um, and like, that's just something that's awesome. You know, like when you have to make a decision, like that's forcing you to be um, very active in your artistic process, right? You're not, um, have a lot of agency there and it and it takes the gut to sort of exercise that agency um, so there we're getting that t-shirt shape better yeah there we have it and then we might need to actually like lift some of the shadow over here um, to be able to describe some of the folds in the jacket um, Especially maybe like right over here. So, and the problem is that like we use that tone for like the dark side of the jacket. So we could take the difference between these two and introduce a yet again another value and use that as differentiators within the dark areas, right? Um, because you're gonna see differences in the darks, right? And you're going to see areas in the dark that are a little lighter. And you may need to, like, lift those up, right? Like, this area on the t-shirt's dark. Um, actually, I don't like that. I like the way that it was. But I think up here it should be a little darker, right? I can change that shape. Because the, the shadow was bleeding into the shadow there, and um, I can do this here. And there's actually a highlight on the zipper that I didn't get, so we can do that. You know. And then I can actually push this dark down there, because there's a little shape, dark shape down there. Cool. I'm getting into like smaller forms. So this is really getting descriptive, right? Um, yeah. So here I might actually need to take this dark tone because I've got some darks over here, right? And work this tone over here. Actually probably do something like that. Oops. Yeah, what's fun about this is like, I don't have to make like a lot of decisions about shading and blending <laughs> either, you know. Um, blending's cool, and I get a lot of questions from, from my students about blending, you know. It's like, oh boy, like how should I blend? Um, well, I mean, you know, ideally, like you don't have to, right? Like, because, you know, blending is, is fine, right? It, it creates this really polished looking result, but you know, you can spend hours and hours and hours doing that, like polishing stuff and have it just not turn out like you want in the end. And you know, I never want that to happen. And, uh, you know, because that's, that's like the, not a fun result, you know, is to just create and blend and then at the end just like hate it anyway. Um, that's not what I would want for you for an artistic process, you know? But yeah. 
I mean, personally, I love, like, graphic painting styles just for this reason, you know? Like, it just... And I'm always, like, I'm not that great at it, you know? But, like, I love doing it, and I love when other people do it well. And it's just something that I want to pursue more and more and more. And I'm just, like, super grateful for all the people that are pursuing it and making it look cool. Um, you know, and some of this, too, is that, like, I have a really chunky brush with, like, these glitchy kind of like edges and uh you know maybe this brush isn't like the best one to pursue this this kind of thing um but whatever you know um now it's like getting to the point where i need to like um get this brush like small so i can get into the, like some teeny forms um so like the uh the cigarette here it's got a shadow side it might need to be even the tone for the shadow side and we might need an even darker thing for the tip we have to be sure that it goes to the mouth and therefore it would be kind of long. And because uh, we have to make sure that the, that the fingers will go around this just a tad, right? And then we need a differentiator for these fingers, right? We have to split them apart and get a tone transition over here, right? Um, so we may need some actual like some of the tone to sneak in. And then, uh, you know, posing fingers is important. Um, so here what I've done is I've done sort of like a, um, a, a, a grouping where you take the, you take the hand, right, written hand, and I've done these two fingers grouped together and these two fingers grouped together right and then here I don't really see the thumb the thumbs kind of hidden like that which is cool so making fingers readable is nice um, when you do when you group them I think one of the biggest problems that I used to do and everybody has is you you take all the fingers and you do that and you draw each one individually um, and there's options of how to group right but I think the main thing is like unless it's an intentional like all five fingers like apart um, you you should group them somehow. Like a really common way is to, um, and this is nice. You can do some something like this. You can group like that, and bring the thumb in. So you just have like a pointing finger. Um, other ones that you see all the time that are useful are like the three in one, right? So you, you can even use just a triangle to indicate. And then the pinky goes over here, the thumb goes over here, right? Simple grouping, and that's a good one for sketching, right? Um, because it indicates where the hand's going, where it's pointing. Um, anyway, continuing on. Um, so here we're going to take some, some light tone into the nose and start to differentiate the nose planes. We might need the tone side over here, right? To get into the shadow of the nose. And we might need to go here and push in some shadow like under the nose a little bit. Then we got the lip here. Right? And then we can take our darkest thing here and, and work into the glasses and give the glasses some interest. And there is a highlight on the glasses over here, right? So I may need to, like, just, you know, get into that a little bit. Um, this is also another question, too. Like, at what point does this get done? You know, does it ever, really? Like, how far do you have to take this to consider it finished? Um... 
that is a stylistic question, right? Um, like, what makes something complete? You know? And I think that's a question that you have to decide a little bit for yourself based on, like, like the art that you like and you want to, and the pieces that you want to make, right? But also based on, you know, like, what the piece is calling for, right? Like, I think this piece being sort of a, um, a rocker type dude, it's like, it's calling to be a little raw, right? It's not calling to be, like, this super rendered guy, you know? Like, it's saying, hey, I'm kind of, like, I have an attitude, and, you know, like, so the piece kind of has to have an attitude also, you know, like, it's got to be like a little bit rough and tumble, I think. And so being chunky with it and being rough and, and a little aggressive, I think is, is nice, you know. got like shadow pattern kind of goes more like this I think right you could probably use like a little more half tone like going over here across through here and probably some more of this dark tone over here right and there's like a little highlight that pops in over here right you should probably use that as a, as a half tone instead of like a highlight because it's in the light but it's not like I don't want a lot of emphasis there you know And then here I'm just working on like shadow patterns, you know. Um, and I want to bring some attention to this pinky, but not a ton, right? So I'm going to use half tone, at least over most of it. And the ring finger also. And then maybe bring some, you know, bring some highlight to it over here. Then I might need to just cover most of the hand with half tone. And then I might need my middle tone like right here as I transition into the, the side of the hand. The side of the hand is really important, I think, you know. Because um, whenever you draw something, you want to give it a side. And uh, to me, that's that's like a big deal. Just showing that that side. Then here I can get in and I can I can use a little bit of contour here to like just be sure it's clear where the edge of the jacket is, right? Because the jacket itself is a little bit lighter than the ground here. So I can like make these patches that are part of the jacket and give it a cool shape. And I can lift this whole patch probably, right? Or most of it. And then, you know, my sanity check is my zoom out. If you're working analog, right, your uh, your zoom out is basically just getting six feet away from your piece, right? Um, you know, I notice like the light is kind of working. It, it's feeling like there's light on this person. The highlight on the hat's too wide, right? Um, you know, it's kind of struggling to hold together, you know. It's wide also. Like, the guy's skinnier, um, making him kind of into an age rocker. So maybe what I need to do is just, um, like, the potential is, like, the shape could... Um, let me take the white so it's visible here. Like, I could probably cut off the, the, the shoulder here, and that would look more accurate, you know. Um... And I do want the sag to the shoulder, but I also think that I need to like change the shoulder shape and make this shoulder go up like that a little more, which making him look a little more hunched, which is kind of cool. Um, so I might need to do something like that. I think that that might work. Yeah, let's do it. But we'll zoom in to do it um, so that it's more 
more reasonable. We'll go back to the larger brush size. And then we're going to need our, basically our paper tone to like hack this down. And we can play it back and forth with this, you know. And then keep doing our sanity check, like back out and check it again. You know, we might need to go a little more up with the shoulder. I think that looks better. Um, kind of losing some differentiation on the nose. Um, and we might need to bring this... Uh, the glasses shape out a little more to be sure that it's like it's reading. And we might need to up the emphasis on the highlights of the glasses just to be sure that those are coming across from a distance. Now we should probably like attack the uh, the thickness of this hat rim. I'm changing the shape of the hat because you know, I don't necessarily like the one that he's actually wearing as a, as a visual shape. And I need something kind of like simplistic up here. So I think this more like even round brim is going to do it. Yeah, that's a lot better. Um, and then I need to re-examine which tone that I used for that. Um, oh, because I want to use the dark tone. So I might need, yeah. Uh, let me use this one. Make sure that I use that. So it's more subtle, right? And pushed back. Um, and if I need to do any differentiation in the hat, you know, I can probably get away with like chunking away here into it. And just giving the hat another side here. Something like that, and then I may be able just to do it just so I can differentiate even more. Just bring that tone right there, so I indicate where that rim is. Yeah, that's a little better. I'm starting to get the sense of light in there. I'm starting to get more attitude, too. Um, could probably bring more like tones in here. I could um, like run through the jacket some and like do a little bit of differentiation here. Find some patches that we could make interesting in the shadow side. Yeah, there's like interesting stuff that's got potential here. So we're getting there with this thing. Um, we need to, you know, maybe decide on the style and if we want to, like, you know, keep it chunky, use a different brush, you know, um, or like smooth stuff out in places. Um, kind of just recheck assumptions again. Um, like we hunched the shoulders really far, so his head's like, you know, weighed down now, which. I like, um, but maybe that's not the way to go. Like, if you look at the reference, you know, the shoulders should probably be, like, down here, you know? <laughs> Which, that's kind of a, that's kind of a drastic change, right? So what we might need to do is just put another layer up and just, like, see what that would look like if we did that. Like, and lowered the shoulders back, like, to be a little more accurate to what we were seeing in the reference. And then, uh, you know, zoom out and see if that looks good. I mean, that's better. <laughs> that is better. It's more attitude and less, like, beat down 
Um, maybe we can push that down just a tad too. We'll just we can push it further and just see like how far can we push those shoulders down and have it still kind of be create this attitude that we want. Change that overall shape again, you know. That might be too far, right? Might need to back that up a little bit. Um, which is why we have a nice, generous undo button. I think that's more reasonable, but I do think we need to actually cut in and make the shoulder um, skinnier. Like that. Add more layers, right? Now we can kind of just kind of recheck and rebalance, right? So I might need a different brush here. Um, you know, I think just hard round is just like hard round pressure opacity brush is like the one, right? Um, we can start to pull values together that way, and then especially in the dark areas by just drawing softly. And uh, you know what I like about using this brush is that um, it tends to unify things, and it's just not a complicated brush. You know, it's simple. Um, here, like this stuff's kind of getting like. I think it's good to kill some of the texture too, just like. Sometimes you do this for a while and you wind up just fighting the textures that you've just created through like chunky brushes and things. And it's good sometimes to be able to like knock that texture down, right? Um, and begin to pull the piece together again. You know? To just this, I think. You know, we, we went through this whole thing of like getting this impact and punch from having the darks and then, you know, we drift away from it. And then, you know, at the end of the day, you got to drift back and just say like, you know, what's important here, right? What's important was to us originally was to kind of like lose some differences in the shadows, right? And just create this kind of like raw figure because of the way that the, the shadows were working and the stark differences in shadows. And, uh, you know, simplifying the shadow tones back down, you know, getting back to the uh, the silhouette kind of read. Which, you you know, the kind of like the first and last thing when you, when you see an image is like, or a person, like the silhouette. It's like everyone has that experience of like, oh, hey, that's so-and-so like across the street or like in that car. And then you get up to them and then it's not them at all, <laughs> you know. Um, and that's because you kind of just recognize the general silhouette of somebody and you think it's them and it's not sometimes and um, and as an artist we take advantage of that idea right like if you generally speaking recognize the silhouette of something um, we can kind of create a shorthand for that silhouette and then uh, exploit that tendency to help us with what we're what we're drawing and and to get the visual impact together right we can work directly with that there we go now we're getting something kind of that's bringing Bring it, we're bringing the control back to it, right? And we can be a little more subtle. And I like to just um, sometimes do this zoomed out, right? Because if I'm zoomed out, I can um, see how what I'm doing affects the whole thing much more 
readily and it allows that productive looseness to come back. Yeah. There's the shadow here, it's real deep between the fingers. I want to just get that across, you know? Because that's cool. And then there's a deep shadow at the mouth there. And right under the nose. And then I have some shadows that are in the hair. And I can use this to kind of push that around and kind of group the hair a little bit better. But then I can also use this to kind of like um, get the strands working a little more. You know, like I can actually go in and like draw some curls. You know, one of the other things too about digital art is like so many people approach it fast and I just wish people would slow down more sometimes, you know? Like take nine hours and work on a piece. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, you know? Like I think it's cool if you, if you, uh, you know, really, really spend your time on something and just like put it down, come back to it later, check it out again. Let's zoom in a little bit and see how the finish is going. You know, from a distance, like it's looking kind of looking better because that shadow sides pulling together, which is nice, you know. Um, I mean, that might need that might be all that it needs to be, right? Like we could probably do a little cleanup here and and just like kill some of this like like rough excess stuff on the outside a little where it's like kind of obviously a glitchy error but um you know we do too much of that and then we're just like back to just like being fussy and we lose the raw quality to it right and that's one of the things that you know we want to keep with a sort of rocker image is the raw quality and we want to be sure that we can block things in right and be sure that we're lo that we're getting the major planes rendered you know there's a shadow on the hand here and a shadow inside here I think that's kind of essential to get across. And then there's some chunky, cool shadow shapes in here. Um, They're gonna help create some character. There we go, that's that's getting more interesting now. Probably need to like kill some of the dark bits that are hurting us inside the face here. We can probably also just like soften the edge on the face and let it kind of like let the face sit back use more subtle value differentiation. This is the thing too with uh, with graphic painting styles is that the value differentiations that you need in a graphic painting style are very very small. Um, so you can get more way more subtle with it you know. Um, 
it's like let's say we did this right here like we took this value right here all right and then we go up um, to from 23 black to 28. I guarantee you, you're going to see a difference if I have a hard edge. Now, if I take these two swatches, 23, and I put it out there, I'm going to do a bigger swatch here and take that and put it right next to it. If I do a blended style, it's going to be harder to see the difference. So to get a form shadow to happen um, with a blended painting style like this, I need to really have a bigger value differentiation, right? Like I might need to swing it to like um, um, a significantly larger difference as I blend such that you can actually see the shadow change. Um, just something to keep in mind when you're doing this stuff, right? Is how subtle can you get? And then there's this little chunky bit right here, which I don't like. Um, because I didn't put anything there. And because I didn't put anything there, it's kind of bugging me. Like little bits of, of the paper tone or the ground tone like showing through. I think it's, it's fine, but like that's a big chunk and it looks terrible. Um, yeah, I mean, like how far do we need to take it, right? That's the next question. Like do we need to, do we need to go really far with it? Like the other thing too is like this value differentiation is big. I could probably like go in and just like make that less differentiated. Because some of it too is about like, you know, where am I going to put my emphasis? If I put like sharp edge, high contrast, it's going to draw attention. So what I can do is, is uh, as a visual sense, like photograph wise, you're stuck with it, right? Unless you're spending time in like the editing suite. Um, so th there I can de-emphasize that. It still feels like light. Um, probably push it even further down um, do something more like that see now it feels like a little more palpable I guess like you feel the light more if if there's a transition right so here I could take this and just like knock some of these highlights down So that they're not as as dark, or not as bright, rather, darken them up. So that way, like it feels like the sun's coming from from up top, right, and just like boom. And then as it hits, it's like really bright here, and then it's darker here, right. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think it's done for now. I mean, that's not like highly rendered or anything, but I I I, I kind of like it. I mean, I think. Um, you know, things that I would change here, probably like come in here and, and maybe like be sure that I got the arm to be like, you know, wide enough. It looked like, it looks like it's a little too small, you know. So I might need to do something like this and just. Make sure that the arm looks big, um, big enough to actually put a forearm in there, you know. And go back to the reference and kind of figure out how this shadow worked again. And then there was a highlight here, right, at the elbow. That's better. 
I think at this point it's it's a matter of like, well, you know, I could spend ten hours finishing it, but you wouldn't really want to like watch that on a YouTube video. But this is like solid enough to where um, I could take this to finish uh, and create something interesting. And it's in an interesting spot now because the the core of it is decent. Um, you know, the other thing that I wanted to mention, and I'll go back on camera for is um, you know a large part of the artistic process is editorial control and um, I don't think that people put enough emphasis on that it's like you see these people like online now just putting like just ton like awesome piece after awesome piece after awesome piece up and um, you know that's like that can make you feel like everything they do is great but um, I think the reality is like um, when you're in it, when you're working, like, it's better to make a bunch of attempts and cut out, like, the stuff that's not really great and not doing what you want. Um, it doesn't mean you shouldn't, you should be afraid to put stuff out there, right? But it, it, it should mean that, that you consider um, how much time you spend going through your work, reevaluating it like challenging assumptions, like looking at your old work, looking at your new work, seeing if your new work um, has drifted off of certain concepts that you were focusing on before and if you need to bring them back. Like um, one of the things that I'm into right now is I bring my old paintings and drawings like into Photoshop and then like reattempt them. And uh, which is kind of fun, like taking a, a ske like a pen sketch or something uh, or, or a crappy painting that I, that I did a long time ago. Saying, well, what would I do with it now? Like what would, like, could I sketch out in Photoshop something better? Um, sometimes it's impossible, but sometimes it works. So I would encourage you to make a bunch of stuff and then be totally unafraid to just like abandon the project and do something else or to just put it in a file folder on your computer and come back to it in a few years. Um, you know, And also just spending the time with it, right? So now I'm about like maybe an hour into this drawing and that's nowhere near enough time to really finish a drawing, right? I think um, six to 20 or 30 or 40 hours is a reasonable amount of time to do something if you want it to be really good. I mean, think about that though. Like what if you did like a bunch of sketches and then you know, you produced one good piece a week or one like high effort piece a week. That means you do 52 um, take a break, maybe 50 pieces a year. In two years, you've done 100 pieces that are high effort. You know, um, multiply that by, uh, you know, every single year, and you've produced like, you know, thousand, like a couple of thousand really high effort pieces in a lifetime, which is huge. You know, so I wouldn't feel the pressure of doing like speed painting. Um, and two hour things like because in a sense that's an unreasonable time limit expectation to put on yourself and it, and it creates a pressure that shouldn't necessarily be there because sometimes you do need to slow down you know um, and that's valid so we'll end there and I hope you really enjoyed it I hope you got something out of this um, the next one we're gonna gonna do is gonna be a more blended uh, uh, rendering style so I wanted to take like kind of two approaches like the graphic style rough and then we're gonna do like more of a blended more controlled approach um, to the next one that's gonna have to have like a bigger um, value differentiation to get the form shadows to show up so that's it for now <laughs>